Hi, Steve Gale here. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate um, uh, remote and configuring um, MySQL for uh, remote management. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, go into PHP My Admin. You can see we're at home on PHP My Admin. And I'm going to go and create a new user account. And I'm going to add a user account. And the username I'll use is, I'll just call it... Um, i40 remote and the password i'll make it password one and retype that password one and and in terms of privileges um, i don't want to create a database for the same name and I don't want to grant all privileges. And I need to make sure that this is set to um, any host here, which it is. But um, in terms of privileges, I can check all for global privileges or I can be specific. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select data privileges only. So we're going to, um, we're going to go into data, but we're not going to allow insert, update or delete or file. We'll just leave it at select. And for structure, we're not going to modify the structure of the database at all. Administration, we don't want to do any administration. And um, SSL require none. Yep. And I'm going to say go and create that user account. I don't need to save the password. So we've added my our new user. So once we've got our new user, then um, what we need to do is if we're going to remotely access the database and do database select queries, then what we need to do is we need to configure um, MySQL for remote management. And the way we do that is to um, is to go into um, uh, SSH. So I'll just quit out of quit out of the browser. Actually, I'll go out of the browser activities and go to my SSH here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say and go and edit and I'll do a sudo nano slash etc slash mysql slash mysql comps do dot d and mysqld.cmf. So sudo nano, etc. mysql, mysql.com.d, mysql.d.cnf. And I use my password. And this is my mysql configuration file. Now, actually, what I should have done before I did this was I should have looked at my IP address, but I know my IP address is 192.168.50.100. So what I want to do is I want to change the bind address. So I go down through here. I'm looking for the bind address. Now you can see here the bind address is only binding to local host. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this bind address to the IP address of the server, and that will allow me to make external connections. So instead of 127.0.0.1, so it's only binding to local host, I'm going to change this to 192.168.50.100, which is my server IP address. And, um, and then I'll be able to make remote connections on port 3306. So I'll save that. And um, yep, and I'll just um, check that I've done that correctly. Yep, get out of that. Okay, so to be able to test this, what I need to do is I need to be able to connect on port 3306 using that i40 remote user account that I've created. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use MySQL Workbench. So what we can do is we can, if you don't already have it, we can install MySQL Workbench, which is what I'm going to do now. And um, it can go in default place. 
and all program features will do and install. And what I need to do is I need to, um, once I run up my SQL Workbench, which I'll do, is I need to, um, my SQL Connections, I need to add a new connection. And the connection name, we'll call this um, uh, E208DMZ Web Server database so I could do backups on the database here and my host name on port isn't 127.0.0.1 it's 192.168.208.100 so that is my external IP and I'm redirecting port 3306 through NAT and security policies to um, from this address to my um, server address now my 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 the username that I'm going to use is my remote one, which was i forty remote. And my password is um, I'll let it request it. And I'm going to test connection. And unfortunately, I got a um, fail to connect. Okay, so I might have to have a look and see why it's failing to connect. Okay, one important thing that I forgot to do was I've reconfigured my SQL, but what I have to do is restart the service. So um, we need to go back and um, and restart the service. Probably the quickest way to restart the service is to reboot the server. But um, I could either do either or. So let's go and have a look at um, my, um, here. Yeah, it's one thing to reconfigure, but if I don't restart the service, then um, that's going to be, it's going to, it's not going to take, those changes aren't going to take effect. So I've just come back over re after a reboot. And uh, what I might do is just try again. So let's um, try and test that connection. So we'll just go back to our parameters. 192.168.208.100, port 3306, SSL, we've got no. Use SSL, no. And uh, we're not looking in advance at this stage. Let's test our connection. And we've got success. Okay, so what we needed to do then was just to, um, after we reconfigured the MySQL configuration file, we needed to restart the MySQL service for that configuration to take effect. So I type in my password and we've got a successful connection. So let's let's um, hit OK and um, let's double click this and um, we've got our connection to our database. So um, let's have a look and see what our, I don't know what data we've got in here, but we might see if we can run a query. So let's go and have a look first of all in um, have a look at what data we've got in our database and we'll see what queries we can run. So we'll look initially using um, PHP my admin. Let's wait for it to load. And let's look at databases. Doesn't look like we've got anything. Um Let's create a new database. Um, database name, test, create. Create a table called um, users. And user ID, integer, first name, voucher 50, L name, 
about uh, 50. And email. About 100. That looks good. Save. Yep, so there's my database. Um, so our, data, our database table is called users. So let's go back to here. We've got nothing in there, but let's do a uh, query. And um, new query. Here we go. New SQL. So we'll say use test. Select from users, and we can run the query. We get no rows return because we've got no data. You can see we've got empty data in here. But if we had data in our um, database table, uh, we could put data in, but there's no need for that. Um, we could um, then read that data remotely using this remote um, remote management tool mysql workbench okay well that concludes this video thanks for watching